Joined by journalist and former Labour advisor Aisha Hazarika and by the former Conservative politician Lord Geoffrey Archer. Hi both, thanks for coming. Good morning. morning. Um, OK, let's kick off with this Green List. Uh, we're going to get changes announced a bit later on today by the government, which I, I say the Green List, but I assume by definition that means if, if there are changes to that, there'll be changes to the Amber List and changes to the Red List. And one of the changes is rumoured to be that Portugal is going to come off the Green List and either go Amber or Red. We don't, we don't know. We don't know at all, actually, but that's, that's the report. Do either of you have any faith left in this traffic light system? Because I'll tell you, I don't. It, I mean, Malta might be going on, on the green list today. How long for? Ten minutes a day? You know? What, what about you? No, I, 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 I don't. And I certainly won't be booking a holiday on that basis. And I think there's so much confusion, um, both to families and, of course, if things change suddenly, that is a huge expense to, to families in terms of having to quarantine, to pay for lots of um, tests. And it's absolute chaos for the travel industry as well, which is just trying to get back on its feet. And I think the government mm. needs to try and provide, in business particularly, people need a bit of certainty. Also, people have been looking forward to their holidays. Some people, you know, are really struggling financially at the moment. They've probably saved up for this holiday. It's a real shambles. And what if you landed at Faro Airport yeah. yesterday with your family, with your kids, and you go on online later on today and find that actually you're not on the green list anymore? Yeah. What happens when you come home? Do you have to go into quarantine? The whole thing's embarrassing. And what, what you've got to feel... There are two groups you've got to feel really sorry for. One is the airline industry, who have been battered the whole year and they're not sure what's going to happen tomorrow. And I feel equally sorry for those people who've actually booked holidays mm -hmm. and are going next week or this week and are now... They've paid the money, they've paid the down pay, they're on... And they're, are they on the way, poor things? Mm. So they're having a terrible time. And what trouble. is the point of having a green traffic light, right, which implies that you are safe to go to this country, if simultaneously government ministers, all of them, constantly say to you, yes, but we'd rather you didn't go. Yeah. That's a bit like sitting yeah. at the traffic lights on the road, yeah. isn't it? And it goes okay. green and yeah. a copper says, I'd rather you didn't actually cross okay. the lights, Mr yeah. Maley. Stay where you are. Absolutely. And the whole point of the traffic light system is when you're learning to drive... I'm a very bad driver, just putting that on the record in case... <laughs> I don't know. But the whole point is you're meant to understand what the traffic light system means. Yeah. You're not meant to interpret and put your own spin on what you think a green light is on. So um, it's very, very confusing. And as uh, Geoffrey said... I do really feel for the travel industry, and it's the airlines, but it's also the resorts as well, because they have to gear up to get their hotels mm. COVID-ready. And not ready. knowing how many people exactly. they're going to have, whether yeah. at the last minute there are going to be changes yeah. and they aren't going to have people there. And even the whole system, when we look at the queues at the airports, the number of border officials, for example, and the cost of tests, it, is, it does seem like a hideously complicated process for people who are wanting to go on holidays to make it work at the moment. It, I don't know whether that's sort of deliberately been made more difficult because they're wanting to discourage people from going on holiday? I think we've, you're quite right. We've got to have more clarity. We've got to know where we're going. People can't get up this morning and say, am I going on holiday or am I not mm. going on holiday? So it's up to the Minister of Transport to make a statement today. One of the problems has been by saying that the Prime Minister is going to make the big statement on the 14th. Yes relative to the 21st, is no ministers are saying anything up until the 14th. I think uh, things have got to be said now, today, on transport, not least because I said the travel industry is in a mess. Mm. Yes. Can you imagine what it's like sitting in Cook's this morning, Absolutely. picking up a phone and saying, uh, where would you like to go, madam? Well, no, no, we've let, got oh, no let idea me where check. To right, well, well let me check. Well, let me... No impossible. idea what list it's going to be on. Let's just jump forward from the 14th to the 21st, so-called Freedom Day. We yes. still don't know for sure. Full disclosure, my son is due to get married on the 25th. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, and, and he and his fiancée had to cancel last June because of, because of lockdown. They've gone ahead with a big booking. It may come down to 30 and they'll but go that's ahead. that's hard. It might not be a big booking, might it? You're no, still waiting to hear what We're still waiting to hear. Uh, so I was very interested yesterday to hear uh, what Sir John Bell, the top government advisor on this, this whole issue, had to say. When he's, he, he used the term rabbit hole. He said it's about time we stop leaping down rabbit holes every time we hear of the possibility of a new variant. We've got to kind of stand oh, up I and face it. I couldn't agree more. Agree? And what drives me absolutely bonkers, and I'm married to a scientist, <laughs> what drives me about is if ten leading people say it makes sense to get going again on the 21st. You just need one person to come out and say, well, I should think it'd be a bit cautious. I, I'm not sure that's right. And he gets on the television, he gets an article in the papers, while the other mm. ten so who are saying... Open it, all it up, drives though. me bonkers. I, the Prime Minister, I think, if you read between the lines, was making it clear yesterday, 
the 21st it's going to happen. We'll get uh, on. Now, Jeffrey, there, he should, Jeffrey's implying, not implying, he's saying directly that there is bias in the media on this, that the media is actually reporting the, the naysayers and the gainsayers. Well, let me get... Sorry, before I should come, let yeah. me give you a classic example. Yesterday, we will not name which television show it was because it wasn't this one. <laughs> they got up and, and said, uh, shouldn't, shouldn't we be cautious? Shouldn't we be careful? Shouldn't we be announcing that it won't be for at least another month? And I said to my wife over breakfast, if it had been the other way round, if they had said, well, I'm afraid it's going to have to be another month, that same television programme would have led on. Well, ha there were no but deaths don't yesterday. Hang on, hang on, hang, yeah, both sides hang, hang on a minute. Hang on it's a all minute. very well seeing that, but remember, at the, you know, we have had this pandemic where because of mistakes made at the beginning, we've got one of the worst death tolls in the world. At Christmas... She couldn't resist it. At, it's, it's not a question of resisting. But there were accusations uh, that we but, went into lockdown people, too yeah, late. Yes, people yes. watching who have yes. loved, lost loved ones, Geoffrey, they're going to think that comment is really glib. The Prime Minister was like, hey, let's all have a good time at Christmas. The death rate absolutely shot up. Even now with this Indian va variant, the border should have been... They should have put India on the red list earlier. So mistakes do keep been made on this. But we are, where we, think... we are where we are. And yep. the difference between the, the period of time that you're quite rightly describing as being a series of mistakes, which you could say was sort of almost inevitable because nobody knew what was coming down the track status. We now have vaccines. We have four vaccines. Yes. And they yes. do work and they work they very do, well. They do, Richard, but uh, what a lot of the epidemiologists are saying, they do, they do work, but we've got to get them into as many arms obviously. as possible, right? So what some people are saying, look, I want everything to open up on the 21st, right? I'm absolutely desperate. I'm not one of these people who's enjoyed lockdown and want to carry on <laughs> lockdown. Don't get me wrong, right? Please. We'll all be parting on the 21st. But wouldn't it be a shame if we've, if we've worked this hard to just sort of not listen to the scientists at the end? And I think you shouldn't let your biases against the scientists who you disagree with cloud your judgment on this. You have to look at what, what the epidemiologists are saying. And many of them, by the way, are saying, the 21st is looking good because of the vaccines, as you say, Richard. Yes. But they're saying this granular data in the next two weeks is going to be absolutely critical. And to quote the Prime Minister, we should be guided by the data, not data. Well, and should there be... Sorry. I just wondered, should there be still a measure of distancing of masks? You know, we still have the question mark as we'll to whether it be. should be complete freedom. We'll, we'll Lord have to Lloyd use Webber, common sense. Well, Lord Lloyd Webber's talking about a complete opening yeah. up, isn't he, on the 21st? Otherwise, he's saying that he will sue the government, if not. But if you were going to the theatre, would you feel completely comfortable with full capacity with people sat side by side with nobody wearing a mask? Well, during the month when we went sort of semi-back to normal, I went to the theatre twice, and we were at least three people. My wife and I had at least three people on one side and three people on the other. I suspect it'll start like that. Mm. But the point you've raised, which is a really important one, if theatres are not allowed to go back to normal, they, too, will collapse. The average theatre needs to be 60 to 70% full to break even. Now, if they're only allowed to be 50% full, you will not be able to put on a show that can ever make money, and that will harm the theatre right. industry. But so we must we, let them minute, get yeah. back. We want to squeeze one more topic in. Before we do, I want a one-word answer from you. My son phones me up every other day and says, Dad, what percentage chance do you think there is that we'll have a proper wedding on the 25th? What percentage chance do you think there is that my son will have a proper wedding on the 25th? 85%. What do you think? 85. I agree with her. Oh, <laughs> no. Absolutely. No. We're in agreement. <laughs> We're in, and, and, and we both wish you, I speak on your behalf, <laughs> we both wish your son every happiness for the future. Lovely. I hope he finds out. Well, listen, we are running out of time, but we've got to talk about something that's all over the front pages of the papers, and this yes. is school czar who's yeah. quick yes. over the amount of catch-up funding. I mean, you know, when the government invites an advisor to come in and give them uh, advice uh, about something, and uh, then it's uh, not uh, followed, and he resigns, it's not a good situation well, to be Sir, in, is it? Sir Kevin has resigned and we admire him for that because he's a respected educationalist. The man who should have resigned was Gavin Williamson. That would have changed him overnight from being a, a man who just doesn't get anything right to a hero. The, well, the, the minister should have resigned. But let me put a major point to you on this. When, you go, when you're in the Cabinet, you go to the Cabinet Secretary and you go to the Chancellor and you say, I need this amount of money. We need an education secretary who will go to the chancellor and give him a hard time. Michael Gove 
when he was Education Secretary, no one here believes he wouldn't have beaten the Chancellor up and got a lot more money. Talk, so we need a new education Or secretary. is it the Treasury then turning well, around look, and I, saying, I, look, we haven't got the money, we've got questions I mean, look, everywhere? Gavin Williamson is known as the Frank Spencer of British politics, right? He's a man so incompetent, it makes you feel nostalgic for Chris Grayling, which is saying something, right? Charlotte, you're laughing, but it is, it is true, right? I speak sooth this morning. And the responsibility has got to come from the top. It's very convenient saying, blame him, blame the Chancellor. Boris Johnson is the man who coined that iconic, brilliant phrase, levelling up. Mm. And levelling up should apply, if you're going to apply it to one area, more than anything, it should be our children. And if you look at other countries, America, the Netherlands, other places in Europe, they're investing in their children now because they know the pandemic has hit hard. Yet again, British politicians I... are making the wrong decision and our economony will lose out in the end because in terms of did skills. You, like did, future did, generations. You, did you hear, Gavin, I don't watch this show non-stop in the morning, so I'm in and out of the kitchen and I have the, the today the Today Show we'll on Radio off, 4, thank worry, you. And I heard okay. Gavin Williamson, the Education Secretary, on the Today Show yesterday. All government ministers dodge questions. And we know he does, because we had an issue with him here on this show yeah, a few yeah. years ago, do you remember? Um, <laughs> went viral. I think, I think he's got <laughs> interviewed, didn't he, mid play It yeah, was amazing. But yesterday, question. I could still hear him not answering a series of questions. Um, of all the government ministers, he is the past master yeah. at giving you an answer to a question that you haven't actually asked. Yeah. So God knows what he'd say about this if he was on this show this morning. Well, what he... I'll tell you, what, nothing at all. Well... We know that uh, he claims that he w agreed with Sir Kevin. If he did, why didn't he resign? Because children need... Uh, Aisha's quite right, I'm afraid. The Americans and the Netherlands are way ahead of us. They're spending up to three times what we're spending. We've only put in three billion altogether... And so yes. Kevin asked for 15 yes. huge billion. Well, Charlotte, Charlotte and can you think of anything more important no. than the next generation and of Charlotte children's yes. education? In the introduction to this, extraordinary that you have a government-appointed czar that Boris said, fix this. He says, mm. I need this, this amount need of money, do. and you offer him 10% mm. of what he asked for. Yeah. Well, it's it, extraordinary. It's, it's mad. And Talking also, about guy the... was very well respected across the piece. You know, ev all wings of politics supported so his should appointment. Be listened to. Yeah. Um, talking right. about amounts of money spent, oh, have we got another storm brewing with this uh, rebellion over for foreign aid spending, because, of course, you know, they say they're going to cut it to 0.5%, um, but... A, a way around this foreign aid spending, which is quite right, I shall will come in and bite my head off quite <laughs> rightly... You better make a point we, in that case. One of the genius things we've done is with the amazing Kate Bingham buying all the vaccines. She's got a lot of vaccines in now, and we may have too many, which is wonderful. And I hope the government will announce that we'll be sending surplus vaccines to both South Africa and India. Because, frankly, we may solve the problem in Britain, but if it isn't solved worldwide... Which is a good the problem point. It's a good point, but... Well, we do need to talk yeah, about but the foreign aid. That doesn't negate the foreign aid cuts. And the foreign aid cuts... A, they're having a very serious effect in terms of the countries from which they've been cut. But it's also about Britain's place in the world. One of the reasons why we are so admired and respected around the world, or certainly we were, is that we took our international responsibilities incredibly seriously. And also what the Foreign Office would say, and indeed the Ministry of Defence would say, our spending on development was that soft power which actually helped us when it came to international diplomacy and also military things as well. So I think it's okay. a great shame. And the curtain comes down on the discussion. <laughs> we'll wait for <laughs> what happens Thank with you the very much indeed. Anyway. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much.